Hello students, I am Dr. Aisha Jamal, Assistant Professor in PG Department of Geography, RDS College in Muzaffarpur, Bihar. And today's lecture would be on erosional landforms of wind. It's also known as alien landforms. So today we'll be studying about the landforms which have been developed by the erosive action of the winds. So these landforms, you know, they take millions of time, millions of years uh, to be at its present stage. Okay. So now let's look in the detail. We'll in this class we'll study about uh, what types, what are the processes of uh, erosion by wind, and uh, how they are uh, producing this kind of landforms. And uh, does erosion by winds are limited to certain areas, or is it found? In all the places okay so uh, firstly we'll uh, know about the process of wind erosion okay so wind performs two kinds of erosional work basically okay uh, first is deflation okay and then is aberration okay then there's another kind which is known as attrition we'll deal with it later but firstly we'll start with deflation deflation actually is uh, you know blowing away of the loose particles loose sand or clay or silt from the ground by the wind you know you have must have experienced when there is a very high speed of winds in your area or there is cyclonic condition or before rainfall when the wind speed is relatively the velocity of wind is relatively higher you must have uh, experienced that uh, especially if you are riding a bike or cycle that uh, some dust particles enter your Eyes. So this is what deflation is. You know, the wind, the velocity, the wind with the help of its speed blows away the loose particles which is lying on the ground and sweeps it away. So these, uh, def this deflation, you know, these causes two types of, you know, uh, region. Okay, two types of uh, landscape. One is called desert pavement, and other is called blowout. So what is desert pavement? So you no, know, basically, you know, before. Uh, dealing with deflation abrasion i'd like to tell you that wind erosion is most actively uh, found in arid region why so because in arid region arid region means the region where rainfall is very low and most of, and for, the, for that region for most part of the year remains dry and they receive very little rainfall so when the area is dry there is no moisture to bind the uh, soil particles so they are basically loose arid region is also uh, characterized by soil which is sandy in nature okay so in these the sandy soil you know they are they have a relatively high uh, larger particles of soil and uh, they are very loose so they are very easily blown away by the winds so uh, <coughs> the, the the landforms the alien landforms are basically uh, more common in the arid region so uh, this deflation this process of deflation this blowing away of the loose particles they cause two types of landscape one desert pavement and another is blowout what is desert pavement desert pavement is what the basically because of deflation what happens that uh, the loose sand particles or the clay particles they are easily blown away by the wind and the underlying rock the pebbles they are visible now so they make way for desert pavement okay this again is the blowout what happens in the blowout that they this deflation causes a <coughs> depression in the uh, land surface okay there is a why there may be a wide depression de uh, depression or uh, uh, depression in a relatively larger area so what happens so basically blowout is sweeping away of the wind and creating a uh, saucer shaped uh, uh, area or or a uh, depression in the basically in the desert region okay the second process is what is called is aberration okay so what uh, what is aberration in aberration the wind the the wind drives away sand sized particles against an exposed rock or soil surface wearing down the surface by the impact of the particles what happens that uh, the when the deflation happens, when the wind is blowing in a very high speed, uh, it is carrying away all the sand particles and the and the loose uh, soil particles and the loose sand particles, cell particles. These these particles they further help in the erosive 
action of the wind. What happens when these, when the soil laden with soil particles, they, <coughs> in the erosion of these uh, rocks, they help in the wearing down of these uh, rocks. By the, the wearing down is due to the impact of the soil particles along with the wind. The wind abrasion is most active in a layer of about 10 to 40 centimeter above the surface. Now this abrasion, you know, the velocity of wind changes with its height. So what happens, the wind is blowing, the most of the soil particles or the sand particles will be available in the lower region of the uh, atmosphere because that is where the wind is deriving its soil particles. So, uh, so the most active average, uh, the most active the wind is when uh, it is between the 10, between in, it, it, is, it is about 10 to 40 centimeter above the surface. Well, it, uh, it is also due to because the, uh, the sand particles, the weight of sand particles would, would, the weight of sand particles would not allow wind to be lifted much higher. Okay. So now, uh, this is a diagrammatic representation of how deflation works. See, the first uh, <coughs> diagram, the wind, the first number is showing the work of deflation. By removing fine particles, a lag deposit is left to armor the soil. You know, when this is, this is basically showing a hypothetical land area. So, some consider it as a desert area. What happens when wind is blowing, it... Uh, blows away the loose particles away from the surface or or whatever open area there is okay now the secondly what happens so it, the deflation continues and the more the surface area is uh, 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 exposed the more it blows away the uh, the sand particles or the loose soil particles and now what happens eventually the desert region or the region where deflation is working it becomes a desert pavement because all the pebbles and the rocks which have which were underlying those surface they become visible now so this is how deflation works now uh, now we'll be studying about the erosional landforms due to adds more to the erosive action of the winds. Firstly, there is ventifacts and dry canters, then there is zusion, there's then, then there are yard dyes, then there are rock mushrooms or pedestal rocks. Okay. Now firstly we'd like I'd like to show you some some of the pictures of the landforms which is developed by the uh, abrasive action of the winds. Now the first picture is showing mushroom rocks. You know uh, you know what mushrooms are and you are definitely aware of the shapes of the mushroom. So basically these mushroom rocks, they resemble the shape of the mushroom with they have the, the bottom of area of the rocks, they are narrower in size and, and as we go up, it uh, takes the shape of umbrella or like a mushroom. So these rocks are called as mushroom rocks. Second, we have zeogen. Okay. Here also there is, you know, there's a cylindrical rock area and uh, the lower portion of the rock has been subjected to uh, higher erosive action than the upper surface. Then there is yardangs. So in yardangs, there is a, there are passages uh, uh, of uh, pa there are passages between these yardangs. And then the hair also we see that erosive action is mostly limited to the lower regions. Okay. Now, then there are ventifacts, okay. These ventifacts actually the rocks which have been polished on two, three or four sides by the action of winds. You know, you must have uh, come across some rocks which you, which you have found very peculiar and very shiny and very beautiful. So these rocks actually, they are polished by... If, if you are an arid region, if you are a desert region, they are they have been polished by the erosive action of the wind. Or if you are seeing these rocks in beaches, beach areas, then th that means that these rocks have been polished by the erosive action of the sea waves or the rivers. Okay. Now, uh, I think, let's see what are mushroom rocks. A mushroom rock, a mushroom rock, mushroom rock is are also called as rock pedestal or a pedestal rock is a naturally occurring rock whose shape resembles a mushroom. Okay. In deserts, a greater amount of sand and rock particles are transported close to the ground by the winds, which cause more abrasion in the lower part of the rock than the top. So here also, you know, uh, the wind is more 
powerful because of abrasive action in its lower in 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 just above the surface of the uh, desert or the land area okay so now these rocks these wind along with the sand particles they cause more erosion in the lower part of the rock than the higher part of the rock so these rocks then they in the course of time and eventually they resemble a uh, mushroom because the lower part is getting more eroded day by day than the upper part now let's see what are zeogens. Zeogens zeogen are a furrow and ridge landscape is formed when the wind abrades the soft and less resistant part of the rock and the hard resistant part is left. So see zeogen in the zeogen you can see here they are a landscape which resembles a furrow and a ridge. Okay, so there is there is a depression and there is a elevated part. Okay, so now the elevated part uh, implies that these are the rocks which are relatively stable they are hard rocks and they are not easily eroded by the winds and the furrows with the furrows which have been formed is due to because they have they were they were underlying softer rocks and they have been relatively easier to erode so now these the entire landscape has been transformed into furrows and ridges because of the uh, uh, because of the placement of the hard and the soft rocks okay so these landscape resemble a furrow and the ridge uh, topography and the ridges thus formed are called zeogens and can be of varying sizes some even 30 meter high so this, these zeogens are or of varying sizes and they can reach up to 30 meters high okay now eventually what happens these ridges also they are uh, they uh, also uh, come into the erosive action of the winds and they also uh, eventually wear away and due to constant wind erosion now what are the yard dams? you know yard dams and zeogen they are uh, if you see the picture they will seem relatively simpler but there is only one difference that the underlying rocks their orientations are different okay the yard dams are formed by wind erosion when bands of hard and soft rocks lie parallel to the prevailing winds and desert region. So in Zeugen, when while there was no condition for the placement of the hard and soft rocks uh, along uh, along the prevailing winds, but in Yardens, if the lie, hard and soft rocks are lying parallel to the uh, the direction of the wind in desert region then the yard dams can form and so soft rocks they get easily eroded and the hard rocks they remain as a relatively stable uh, fact so such rocks turn into ridge and furrows landscape by wind and abrasion so here also there is a ridge and furrow uh, landscape but uh, bus, bus, uh, only difference is that there is a difference in the placement of the layers of the rocks okay the belt of hard rock standing as rocky ribs up to 15 meters in height okay this, this belt of you know hardens can reach up to 15 meters in height so now what the vent on the third fourth um, landform would be ventifrat so ventifrat is a very interesting uh, phenomena when abrasion can carve stones on a desert plane into shapes with flattened or grooved sides creating a ventifrat so what happens they in the wind there is a particular direction of uh, wind in a desert region so if if it happens to come across a, a stone or a bigger uh, boulder or rock so it polishes or it erodes one side of the rock okay so if one or two sides are eroded by the wind they are called as ventifacts so what again if these rocks they have become smaller because due to erosion then again they change their direction they you know they move away the order they roll away so the new the 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 new side is exposed to the prevailing wind condition so due to this more than two three or four sides are eventually eroded by the action of wind so these uh four sided or five sided rocks which have been polished by the winds they are called as ventifacts when the if the if there are three sides have been eroded by the wind they are called as recanter I hope you are uh, getting along what I'm trying to say okay now uh, see there is this is the diagrammatic representation of how actually yard angs or mushroom rocks or zoogens are formed so there is you know uh, alternate layers of hard and soft rock and then again the soft rocks they, they get eroded easily or earlier than the soft rocks so uh, a peculiar type of structure uh, comes into 
landscape. So these, uh, now the, they form the troughs, furrows and ridges, they form the yardines, they form the only because there is a, um, a different orientation of the hardness of rocks or they are placed alternatively and they form, due to erosion of the winds, they form a different peculiar landscape. Uh, just because just I want to give you a little picture of what uh, are the movements of sand in the wind. I have drawn this diagram. Okay, so there is three types of movement. Okay, one there is suspension, then there is saltation, and then there is surface creep. Creep, you know, you know something like wind is blowing really very closer to the land surface, so it uh, sweeps the uh, surface along with the sand particles. This is called as surface creep okay now what is suspension you all know that what is whatever is suspended in the air okay it is it is hanging somewhere in the air it has not yet the salt particles or the sand particles they have not yet settled down it you have you might have experienced this place more in along the um dusty there is the air is very dry and there is, there is very dry and there is lots of uh, uh, movement of air and there is wind is blowing in very high speed and at that time you know, very many people get allergies also because of uh, uh, suspended pollen grains in the air so suspension is when the slow, the soil the load of the wind have not yet settled down and they are they are being carried away by the wind uh, up to a certain height what is saltation Saltation is the bouncing or the jumping of the soil particles or the loose sand granules or the loose soil um, uh, particles uh, along with the air. So the, uh, the su surface with surface creep, the load is basically near the surface of the land surface, so near the surface of the land. And with saltation, is it is relatively higher than the surface creep. And with suspension, the load is uh, is up to a certain higher level with the wind. So these these are the movement of the sands and wind. Okay, so next class I'll be taking uh, about about I'll be, next class I'll be taking about the depositional landform the wind. So I hope you are uh, you have understood what are the landforms uh, created by the erosive action of the wind and uh, whatever theory will be there we will be uh, doing it in offline mode. Thank you, students.